Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Board Show right here on Smash FM here in our 10th year of the station. We're here in Melbourne, but so let's go across to our friends up in Queensland and we're heading to Brisbane in particular, of course, uh, it's been with the Red Sox uh, softball A1 women's team. And of course, uh, we've got pretty much the whole team join us right now to tell us a bit about uh, the season they just completed uh, last weekend and they join us now. Thanks all you for joining us. Uh, well, yeah. how are you? <laughs> Good to be here. Thank you. <laughs> I'll get uh, each of you to introduce yourselves and tell us what position you all play on the team. Uh, I'm Laura and I'm the pitcher. I'm Cadence and I'm the catcher. I'm Emily and I'm first base. And I play second most of the time. <laughs> I'm Moy and I play third base. I'm Tamika and I play short the time. Um, I'm Janice and I'm in, I'm in the outfield. I'm just Raya and I'm right field. Sorry, I'm Crystal. I'm the assistant coach. And I'm Brad. I'm the coach. Uh, tell us a bit about the season just gone. Uh, obviously, we're not going to mention too much about the grand final, but uh, tell us how the season went. I'll, I'll start then. Um, I think it was a really successful season. Um, we sort of started out... Um, I, I believe that we didn't even have an A-grade team last year and um, Crystal formed a group of girls together this year, um, a mix of really young, talented um, girls who um, basically represented Australia in the Australian squad in the under-16s um, and also got some really good quality um, older girls um, of, of around the 22 age, 22 years of age. Um, and we've also got a couple of Aussie girls um, thrown in there who um, are looking to go to the Olympics this year. So we've got a really good mix of youth and experience. And um, But I think what's better about the whole team for myself is just that they're all really work hard as a group and, and, a gr and great people. So um, that's pretty much where we started. And we had a really successful season. Um, it was, yeah, I think we, we came second. Um, at the end of the regular season, um, we, we beat the Panthers, who eventually won um, the Premiership. Uh, we, we played them. We beat them once throughout the season, and they, they beat us a couple of times. But other than that, we won every other game. So it was a really successful season for our first season um, in A-grade. And uh, as I said, thanks to, to Crystal for putting together the, the whole lineup. So, yeah. Like, I didn't know what to expect coming into the season because not all of us, like, the older girls have played together and the younger girls have played together, but we hadn't come together as a group. And from, like, the first week, we hit it off and played really well and we we built every week. We got better and better. Um, so it was really, it was really fun to come down every Saturday and play with all the girls. And we did so well throughout the season. Almost as as actually answer my next question anyway, uh, in regards to how did the team sort of work together considering of, uh, obviously, the variety of experience that all of you have had. Um, I'll take this one, I guess. Um, so uh, the team kind of hit it off from the get-go. Um, we all have a lot of commitment. So training, um, it wasn't – there was obviously a core that went to the training every week. But um, other than that, we all kind of scattered our trainings with all the other commitments that we had. Um, so – it was really, we just came together on a Saturday and some of the younger girls had played probably three games before playing with us anyways that same day. Um, but just, I think the girls, the young girls that we had, they wanted to learn more. And um, some of us older girls, um, we obviously wanted to give our knowledge and um, share that with some of um, the younger, well, with all the younger ones anyway. So I think we just, I can't even explain it, but um, from the first game, um, and then throughout the whole season, we just kept building every week, like Dawes was saying. And I think um, the fact that we didn't have any expectations, like um, we kind of went out there um, not really expecting much and um, ended up coming out with so many, um, so many gains throughout the season. I think that was both individually and as a group. And um, as much as you were like, don't want to speak about the game on the weekend, I think our last three games that we played um, were probably the best that we played. And um, for some of us, some amazing catches and amazing hits that um, we'll all probably remember for the rest of our careers. Now, watching your team play um, when there was 
games that was uh, streamed uh, or I guess watching, um, I guess the results come through. And obviously I was right behind the watching and following the team from down here in Melbourne because obviously uh, most of my favourite players are on this team uh, as well. Uh, tell us, uh, I guess, how special was it throughout the year and especially um, to, and I'm assuming that you had to have much disruptions due to COVID, but I guess the weather was a major factor this year. Uh, I think he's had a lot of rain uh, that was washed out uh, a couple of year games. How, how difficult was that to adapt to those? Honestly, it happens every summer season. So you kind of get used to rescheduling your weekends um, to play washout games. Um, and, you know, if you have that rainy afternoon, you put on a movie instead. <laughs> I think I think yeah. with the team this year, the the BSA um, with like I said, uh, Dorita said, there's a lot of rain that usually comes through the season, um, so they changed a bit of the format this year to include a lot of Friday night games. So we saw a lot of Friday night games, um, inst sometimes as well as a Saturday, but sometimes instead of a Saturday. So that gave them the opportunity to get those games in as well. So yeah, it was a pretty good format and. Um, yeah, I think we didn't. We ended up having a couple of washouts, but yeah, it, was, it wasn't a bad season. There was one time we got washed out and um, it rained really hard, and so Cadence decided just to <laughs> go down and slide, practice sliding, and she slid right across the diamond, and she just was full of mud, and it was uh, very funny. <laughs> I, I don't think she decided. I think that was a paid event. It, it, was, a <laughs> it was money on offer for somebody yeah. to go and do it. And then <laughs> her uniform was still wet from then. Her <laughs> uniform was definitely still wet from then. <laughs> I was taking the 10 bucks. <laughs> it was a I'm great sure action shot video free. with that mud going straight into your mouth. Yeah. It was worth, it was was worth every bit of the $10. Washing rocks out of my face. It's all right. It builds the immune system, Bob. <laughs> After, afterwards, yeah. Laura, we're talking about the age difference and like, because we're older, we would have had to get paid like a hundred bucks for it. Because, but because she's still sixteen, she only took the ten. Well, yeah, I mean, we sis would have to stretch clothes. beforehand. Like, I'd have to have a warm up before I slid in there. I'd have to have a good old warm up and stretch and pre warm up for my warm up. Yeah, I, I just wouldn't want to wash my clothes. I was gonna say, how did your mum like that video there, like, Cadence? <laughs> uh, she wasn't too happy about it. Ah. She encouraged it. She <laughs> I could only imagine. <laughs> now, um, Tamika just mentioned before about uh, the, the team's best games was the last three games, which was all during the final. So it was the semis, elimination and the prelim um, and the grand final, of course. Uh, tell us, uh, out of those three games, which one was the, the best game that the team played? I reckon the first one too, the first Panthers game. Yeah, definitely the first one. Oh, actually, in terms of like, yeah, except for like one innings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think everyone just stepped up a new level when we got to the, when we got to those finals, everyone took a step up, especially our um, younger players. Everyone took it to the next level and it made it that much intense of a game. And that's what makes playing together as a team the most exciting is because everyone stepped up and was working their hardest, making some awesome catches, making the great hits. And that's what makes it a great game and a special to be a part of. So I felt that first Panthers game was a really fun one to be a part of. I, think I would said... love to hear from the younger ones and yeah. how they felt <laughs> in those last couple of games or even throughout the season. Um, I personally think that the Panthers, like the first um, one, that was it the prelims? Is that the one Semi. Maybe oh, the semi. semi. That was um, probably the best one that we played personally. Like, I agree with you guys. Um, I think that, like, as a younger player, I wanted to, like, be up to your levels, like, to the older girls' levels. So um, it was just, like, more intense. Um, not, like, intense in a bad way, but in a good way. And, like, the vibes were just, like, so much. Like, it, it, like usually it's here, but it was just all the way up here, and it was really good. I just feel like I was more excited to hit off like Josie just because she was an Australian pitcher. I just had the drive to be like, I'm just going to hit off her. I don't care what the outcome is. I just want to hit the ball. Um, yeah, I just felt like I had to just like, I don't know, be like 
there with you guys the whole time and not like just drop and yeah. If I can, if I can talk from a coaching perspective, I would say that the 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 older girls really led the way. They stepped up and and said, "Come on, girls, come with us." And the younger girls caught up with them and just went for the ride with them. So, yeah, they're absolutely correct. And they absolutely did because, like Em said, she got a couple of hits off Jazz. Like Cadence caught really well and was strong in the box. And Soraya took like a game changing catch. So, like they had huge um differences they made a huge difference to um those games as well i think one of the traits of this team is i think laura might have said it that we built up a bit of a tradition of never giving up and we were four, four or five nil well five run difference in that game and we and we came back to to, to level the scores and it just showed you know, what she said at the start of the game, that we don't give up, we never give up. And I think that that even happened all the way through to the final. And in the end, it was one hit that, that cost the final, but we, we never gave up the whole time. And even in that last innings, we, we were still fighting to the end. And I think that's a real tribute to the team as well. Yeah, I definitely agree with what Brad said. Yeah. Um, I don't know. On the grand final day, it was nil all until the last of fifth inning, if I'm correct. And when they, um, there were loaded bases and the batter hit a home run over the fence. They scored four runs. After that, we were, we were still calm and we knew that there was some sort of potential leading up to the end of the game and that we might be able to score the runs. So I think that's because we've experienced, or experienced that throughout the um, season that we were able to cope with that situation. So, yeah, definitely. It's really good. They hit that like we came back and scored a run. Um, yes. It wasn't enough yes. to win us the game, but it still showed how. Yes. Yeah. For sure, Dozzy. Now the question I want to ask is the the two players that are either or in Canberra or will be going to Canberra uh, very soon. Um, I guess how much of the preparations for that, and how important was the games leading up to? Now, obviously, you're going to be heading to Canberra for that training camp. I don't, I don't look at it in a way where I do kind of in the back of my head, it is a lead up. But at the time, Red Sox needed me. They needed me um, first because they were the team I was playing for. So um, at that time, they were my first priority because, you know, the girls needed, they're the ones who needed me at the time. And it was just kind of a bonus that this was also game time for me leading up to um going into Canberra because obviously we're going to be having a lot of games in Canberra but I didn't look at it in that way I kind of looked at you know what these girls are the ones who need me at the moment these are the girls are going to give my all at the moment yes there's these there's going to be a few things I'm going to try but you know what in the end I know the girls have got my back and I, they know I got theirs so um yeah that was the kind of way I looked at it um it was just kind of like a blessing that this was also just like a um just a like in the in the moment kind of, you know, already leading up into the Canberra. But, you know, Red Sox needed me first before the Aussie girls. Um, and I guess for me, um, the the season, um, it, it's the best competition um, probably not only in the state but um, nationally too. I think it's probably the strongest club con- competition and it has been um, for years. So um, we are very lucky. Um, I know that some girls – all over the country haven't played half as many games as the um, games that we have. So just being able to face um, quality pitching and um, obviously quality teams throughout a whole season um, after having a year that was a bit unknown and um, not too many games um, within the year. So it was really good to um, have a great season obviously as a team and then obviously being able to play um, some really good competition as well. So um, I think that Red Sox has obviously really helped me um, in the lead up to camp and um, is an absolute blessing to now go into the camp and be able to play games after having played such high quality games for this team. This question to the players in particular, be very carefully how you answer it. Tell us a bit about your two amazing coaches. So can I just say, <laughs> with each game, every game we've played, um, Brad, our head coach, has sort of given all of us an opportunity to talk and speak up the get about our games before the game. Um, 
and especially with Tamika um, and Janice and sometimes Dawes, they speak up, speak up and um, just go through, go over the um, how the game went and everything. So like it wasn't just Brad and Crystal that were all in, it was every everyone that was all in and just reflect on our game. So yeah, no favourites. I have no favourites. So. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing because um, Brad after every game had like a like a review of the game I guess and he, he said like what everyone did well what we need to work on and like it made us feel really good about what we've done and made us feel really motivated to come back the next week and do better um and it was really cool that like all the girls got to say something in that it was a really like collaborative atmosphere um yeah, and it wasn't just like you just rock up, play your game, and go home. It was like, yeah, we're here to we're here to improve, we're here to get better, and we're here to do well. So, I think that was um, really good for like our mindset as we went through. And then also Crystal for organising us. <laughs> Can I just say too that this was my very first year of coaching. Um, I've coached other sports. I've watched softball for a while, but I know that. Crystal has been coaching and playing softball for 38 years. So I've used that experience um, from Crystal as well to, to help me out this year. And, and I just know the experience of the girls themselves. They know how to play. Uh, they don't need a coach to tell them how to play. Um, so I just let them play and um, tried to pick out the positives each week. So it was really easy for me to coach this group of girls. Um, I just look at the little things like the hustle, and the effort, and they gave that every week, so I, I couldn't be happier with that. So. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that we don't see. Um, like, so I think we see like 10% of it. Um, yeah, we really appreciate everything they do. And I think with um the way that Brad coaches um with, I don't know, the first few set, um, games, I realized that he was taking notes of like little things during the game. And, like, I found that was a really good thing to discuss after each game. And um, I don't know if Moy implemented this or not, but me and Moy coached on the 14s Red Sox team. But Moy started doing it with our team. And she's been taking notes during our game. And after the game, she likes to have a debrief with the under 14s Red Sox. So I think Moy implemented a little bit from Brad for that. Oh, and I just have I guess a really good. bad memory bank. That's I'm just here. me. <laughs> that's that's good. good. I haven't got good. Yeah. Thanks, Lozzie. Yeah, so but I mean, yeah. That's okay. I'll yeah. try. It's good to implement those <laughs> implement those little things to make like obviously me and Moy learn to be like for coaching that team. So we learn from our coaches to work on that. Um I definitely would say Laura's a bit more vocal, so I'm trying to fill in her gaps and do what I can best and not trying to um, do what she's doing or anything, just trying to collaborate better, I guess, with a, a sort of <laughs> co -coaching not within, this teaching, <laughs> within this topic, but yeah. The question particularly goes to the three girls I actually interviewed in Melbourne uh, last year, um, who was in the Queensland team that completely sw swept everyone uh, down here in Melbourne. Uh, tell us, I guess, how special was it to play down here? Um, and what did you learn from, especially the, the same players that had that experience um, to add to your game to hopefully carry on into whenever the next Nationals will be? Well, I know that you, each of you guys, like Emily and Laura, you guys are pitchers. Um, Soraya and Tamika, you guys, and Dorinda, you guys are up the middle. And with, with, with Moy as well, Cadence, you probably didn't, well, you and Janice are the catchers. Like, you, you got experience there. So how did that help you guys? Maybe share some of that, how, how those mentors within the team helped you out. Emily. Um, oh, I'll go first. I think that just um, knowing that, because before we started this season, I knew of all these girls beforehand. And um, obviously, like, I looked up to them as, like, corny and cheesy as that sounds, even though they didn't know me, like, I looked up to them and like being able to play at like nationals at a high level um, and come through with like all um, losing the first two games and then like winning 
um, every single game after that, including the grand final, like really like boosted my confidence and being able to play with these girls who are older and play in a much like higher level. Um, like going to college, some girls play for Australia, some girls play for Queensland. Like it's really like good to um, be able to experience and like have that opportunity to play with like these like ladies who are, um, have played higher up and are in higher age groups. So, yeah. Personally, I feel that the competition in Brisbane for A1 is a lot higher than it was in under 16s. So it was like great competition down there, but coming back here was even better as per se, because like the people we play with are older, they have more experience there. In a way, they're more fun just because they're more mature and all that. And yeah, it was just, it's not much difference, but there's a big difference in a way. Um, I just like felt like I had <clears throat> like a bit of confidence coming up to like play with these girls from like playing um like other at other associations with them all. So like yeah, I played with a few of them before. Is there one particular game throughout um you know the the year that uh, that you just thought um like everything that went into the game was like exactly how we wanted it. Think of the Panthers game in the semi final, um, and it, but that wasn't like not everything went to plan in that game either. <laughs> um, but that was probably my that's probably my standout game of the whole season. I think that game was it was really good because it taught us a lot of lessons. Like um, we definitely out hit them in that game, um, but we also kind of threw the game away ourselves as well um, with a bad um, defensive innings. Um, so I think that my favourite game would have definitely been the final and um, the fact that it was one hit and it wasn't um, it wasn't your Stacey Porter, it wasn't anyone else. It was actually one of um, Queensland's other young guns coming through. So um, just to just for it to be not that it was someone different, but um, just for oh, it to yeah. be another young um, junior coming through. And um, it was one hit. Like, other than that, we were, we were pretty perfect. Um, it was a nil or ball game. Um, we got runners on. They got – they had loaded bases a few times and they didn't convert any runs and um, some awesome catches like Soraya's and um, Laura pitched great. So, yeah, I think that that was just a really good game and it was just one hit that took it away from us. I loved all the wins of our team this season. Like, I thought <laughs> every time we, we, we won – we played really, really well. And um, like we, we, we mercyed some teams. Um, we said sometimes we would come out to a good start. We got off to a real flyer. Um, so I thought all the wins over the season were really, we controlled it. Um, when, we, when we did Panthers in one of the first few weeks, I think it was a walk-off um, double from Soraya. Um, that was sort of like the last pitch that got us, in, got us that win as well. So I thought that was a really, really cool, cool game for us. And, and we talk about that, that first semi final, even though we lost, it didn't really feel like a loss because we did play so well. So um, that's what I think. I think that um, that game that you're actually speaking of, Brad, was the one I was actually thinking of as well. So that game, they actually shut me and Tamika down. I actually remember that game. But all the young ones came up and got all our runs. So I thought that was a very special moment to us, not only us, but I think it proved a point in A1 in Brisbane Association that we were coming up. You know, we didn't. it didn't matter if you shut down me and Tamika. We had more people coming through. You know, you had to beat our whole team. You didn't have to just beat the typical ones you know. You had to beat all of us. You know, we were all making that stand and we were all at that same level. I think that really set the standard for our team um, right from that point. And I think the teams knew that we weren't going down without a fight from that, from that game, you know, and it wasn't just the older girls. It was the younger girls too. Even if you shut the older girls out, you still had to actually fight to beat our younger girls as well. So I think that game really set that standard for all of us. And I think it got that competitiveness into the girls that, you know, like me, Tamika and Dory, and um, Moy have been playing A1 for quite a couple of years. Um, like I've been playing for quite much younger. And, you know, like when you are that young kind of player coming into A1 the first time, there is that one game that makes you click that competitiveness. And I think that was that game, you know. Um, I thought it was absolutely fantastic right from that start of the season. 
my next question I want to ask all of you is how did all you get involved in softball and why did you choose it? When I was younger, my mum played, oh, well, not when I was younger. When my mum was younger, she played softball. And um, my parents always thought that it'd be a good sport for me to go and play. Also because they thought it would be a cheap sport. Turns out it's not. It's quite expensive. <laughs> Everybody giggled really hard then. <laughs> <laughs> quite an expensive sport. Um, but yeah, it's basically because my mum wanted me to play. Um, my parents wanted me to play. And so I started when I was like five playing table. And then, yeah, I've been playing since then. I have a very similar story to Cadence, except mine was probably when I was three, I started and that's just because mum played dad in Ipswich and she's like, oh, we'll just join you up just because I'm down here. So we'll just let you do it. And then, yeah, I fell in love and haven't stopped since. I um, I started when I was about eight years old um, in Mount Isa and same thing, kind of my mum played and my brother played all at the same time. And, you know, I kind of fell in love with uh, hitting the ball as hard as I can and throwing the ball as hard as I can could never throw it straight only perfected that in the past couple of years so I mean sometimes it still don't go straight but you know we try our best (laughs) it's got a curve to it now so it looks like it's like not going straight and then it curves into your glove so it's yeah it's kind of nice like that but then it's kind of like oh god damn it but yeah no I kind of fell in love with kind of just you know diving all over the place and you know catching the ball throwing the ball as hard as I can hitting the ball as hard as I can so That was always so much fun. Still is. (laughs) I was introduced softball through my friends and I started when I was about eight years old. Um, I started because my brother played baseball and then I played baseball and then I like met heaps of friends that had their brothers playing that played softball and then I just joined playing softball and then been playing since I was like 10. I started playing... I'm Aboriginal and all of my aunties and my mum played on a Sunday at Redlands um and so I was running around and they were like you should do it too and then like Janice just fell in love with being competitive and throwing really hard and hitting really hard and just kept playing. Um, I know for me I my parents neither of them played softball um so my dad when I was five apparently I was just picking up the sticks in the yard and trying to hit things so they wanted a sport that I represented that and they found hockey and they wouldn't let a five-year-old play hockey so they just stumbled across t-ball and sort of that's how I started playing softball and sort of progressed through there and never left. (laughs) I can so see you hitting stuff with (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, well, just sign me up, I guess. It's actually really cool um, hearing everyone. Um, it seems to be a common thing that um, softball, people start playing softball because of family. Um, and if not, like for instance, um, I started when I was nine, um, but my softball family is a huge part um, of not only my career, but the reason I started. And um, yeah, it's, it's huge within my family and um I guess even further, um, my softball friends and the people I've grown up with are now family as well. So, yes. I started playing in, uh, in school, at T ball in school. Unfortunately, they don't have it at schools anymore, which is probably part of our participation problems that we have. But um, yeah, just started playing in, at that, and who would have known that I'm a little bit competitive? So, I'm still actually playing 40 years later. Anyway, <laughs> throwing a little bit of coaching in there. I play, I coach, coach the A grade to get that, get at that level that I can no longer do. I haven't been able to do for a long time, but love it. Um, for me personally, my background is not with softball. Um, it's sort of like cricket or football. Um, but I sort of fell in love with it when my kids started playing, and um, I think it's a great sport for parents to to watch because you, there's some individual stuff that goes on within a game that that you can really get into. And then there's also you, the, the wider team aspect of it as well that is really, really good. And then once the kids start getting better, um, going up in the ranks, it just becomes so, so great and so fun to watch. So I recommend any parent um, put their kids into softball. Um, I didn't think it would be that great, but it's, it is a great sport. 
Now, what does the sport of softball mean to all of you, especially playing for the Red Sox? So I'm a life member of Red Sox. Um, started playing when I was 10 years old, 10, 11 years old for Red Sox. So I've been with the club 40 years. Um, I had, took a bit of a hiatus after I had the kids. I guess what it means for me is, um, for example, Tamika, um, I was, I was very good friends with her auntie um, and her mum and we played together. So my daughter and Tamika actually grew up from one, two-year-olds running around, holding hands, running around the park. So to see her come through from where she was at and watch her become the player she is today, uh, just like Tamika said, it's, it turns into a whole family event. So, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of good people that you meet along the way. Um, I think personally, um, being new to the Red Sox um, this season, I really enjoyed playing, especially at that higher level. I also, I got opportunities that I probably wouldn't have ever gotten anytime soon. And I'm really quite grateful for that, um, that I actually got to, like I, I got the trust to be able to rise up to the level that um, Red Sox shows. And it's really great to like, see Red Sox go from having two and a half teams or something last season to having seven. So it really goes back to Crystal putting in the hard work behind the scenes, which is really great. And it's a really supportive club. So, yeah. Hey, softball. It's just, it's, it's always a place where I feel comfortable and happy and, um, because I get to be competitive and get that out of my system, but I also get to have really great friends. Um, yeah, I've met so many people and I always feel, I, I love being part of the community. Um, and then for Red Sox, I was like, like the younger girls now, a few years ago, playing with some really cool people um, like Mel Weaver um, and being able to learn from them and be able to step up to that high level was really cool because we played some games that we weren't supposed to win and we did really well um so, and I I love playing for Red Sox because I also feel really supported um like ever since I was what, 16 or something when I joined um yeah I always feel I always feel supported and comfortable and just I know that I'm gonna gonna have a good season if I play for Red Sox and on top of that, I feel like softball is like a place where you can risk, take a risk or make errors, make mistakes and learn from it. So that's not something that we can do outside of softball. I mean, you can, but you can practice that within softball. And I think that's really good about, about it, about sports in general. I think for me, um, the sport has uh, actually helped me grow in so many different kind of ways. So I've had ups and downs in this sport. I can't even count how many times. <laughs> um, it's always been a very much of an emotional roller coaster for me in all sorts of different type of ways. But I've come at the better end of it, still loving the sport. I think that definitely says something about um, the sport, just in me and the sport in general. So um, I can't express how much I do love the sport and love being a part of just the Red Sox and the crew and just in general. Um, I should say that I, would, I never started out as a as a Red Sox player, I actually started out as a, um, I was part of another club, but again, going through quite a lot of ups and downs. Um, when I decided to leave that club, Red Sox welcomed me in with open arms. So, um, you know, they, and that was, and you know, red looks quite good on my like contrast. So I'm not going to lie. Red and brown <laughs> is quite nice. She quite, she quite scrumptious in that uniform, but <laughs> I, love you, no, I know you all thinking it, but no, nah, but nah, again, and, um, no, but for real, um, you know, the girl, like the team opened me up with um, open arms and was very welcoming. And um, that was in a time where it was very much in a downward spiral for me. So I think that helped me bounce back, not just as a player, but as a person as well. Um, it made me kind of love the game again and actually made me, love all the girls like even more and it didn't I didn't distance myself as much um so for me it's just helped me grow in so many different types of ways in the past three years I've been to three different clubs out of Brisbane 
And I just feel that Red Sox has been the most fun that I've been to, especially this A1 team. Like, it's just a lot of fun. Like, everyone is calm and collected. But when we need to be, we're also really, like, aggressive in a way towards our softball. Like, it's just a really competitive team and really fun at the same time. I think um, this is my first season with Red Sox. Um, and I just felt like coming in, um, I loved being part of the rebuilding of the club. And I don't know, they just, the club was welcome with such that was such a community, welcome arms, welcoming all of us in who were new or returning. Um, I just, it was a very nice part of being a part of a team that was, I don't know, I personally felt like we were sort of underdogs going into the season and um, being such a young team. Um, like there's a lot of experience in the team, but we are a young team. Um, and that's what makes it a fun, fun journey as well to be stepping up into A1 um, with the Red Sox and coming back into it. Sorry, I just will just to give some sort of context into what this team um, has done. Um, last year, whilst Red Sox has a very proud history at, at um, Brisbane, last year they couldn't field a A grade uh, side for all whatever purposes um, and they had we're limited to three clubs three teams on the whole entire park this year we've got nine teams competing on the park and all these girls either have put their hand up have had to go to another club to play and have put their hand up to say yes please I'd love to come back or have said um, and Laura is the example she was the first person I went to because I thought we can't form an A-grade pitcher unless we've got a strike pitch A-grade team unless we have a strike pitcher that players will want to come back to so Laura was our first signing to get the, the rebuild the team um, and then Tamika and then the rest just followed. So without those two girls' particular signing on, we wouldn't have had an A grade. We wouldn't have had nine teams back at Red Sox. So it's, it's a lot more than just a, uh, an A grade team. Um, softball for me, um, as I said, um, it's my life. Like you'll probably see me around um, a lot of different ballparks, whether it's coaching or playing. Um, I love to help um, no matter, yeah, if it's coaching um, either school kids or club teams or anyone just individually. Um, and then I obviously love playing the game too. Um, I'm a Redlands girl through and through, um, but I obviously um, have a wee play summer um, at Brisbane and um, as Crystal said, um, Tegs and I played for Red Sox from under 14s. And um, yeah, I think the, the club is just, it's, it's really outstanding what they've done in the last year um, and what they've provided such a, a group um, like this A1 team. But um, it's always been a little home away from home as well. And they've always supported us. And they're just, a, they're a really good club. And um, yeah, I hope that we can um, provide an A1 team for them um, to continue and so that these girls have somewhere, somewhere to play and um, look up to as well. Okay. Um, well, this is my new, my first season at Red Sox um, and at Brisbane. Um, I am also at Redlands as well. Um, so far, it's been pretty good. <laughs> um, and, yeah, everything, everyone's been, like, super supportive and I'll definitely come back. Finish up with this uh, couple of lighthearted questions as well. Anyone can answer it, which is who had the most embarrassing moments on the field this season and what was it? That's a good one, actually. I don't even think, I don't know, has anyone done anything embarrassing, actually, though? We're not really an embarrassing type sometimes. I mean, every great <laughs> softball has a really good wedgie. So, I mean, like, <laughs> that is something. Like, I know everyone in this team has pulled out at least one wedgie. I'm in the outfield, so I see all your butts. So, you know, like, I know you all years have pulled out at least one wedgie. But I'm thinking, I don't even know if we've done anything, like, I, I feel like we're all clumsy, but because it just happens all the time, you just think nothing of it. Um, yeah, I think it just gets normal. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, that, that happened five minutes ago. It's going to happen in yeah, that. Mm. And then people are like, what the hell? And you're just like, yeah, you get used to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I can't think of anything, really. Yeah, no. I was, I was embarrassed because I didn't make that change. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I had a, All right. Um, 
and I was worried because um, Cadence just hit a double, and I was really <laughs> so happy that Cadence hit the double, and I was worried about getting a catcher for runner, and then I ended up getting like Rachel. I took Rachel off for, I think it was a net battle or something or an inning, and then when Rachel came back out, I said you're going back out now, and I didn't go through the umpire, and so the other coach like runs out, mm. oh, you know, blah blah blah. <laughs> Should have come. So the next time I'm like, what? And then Rach had to Rach sit gets ejected. <laughs> Rach gets ejected oh, from the game for the rest of the game. <laughs> so, I, so I said to Rach, okay, Rach, you're never going to sit off for the rest of the season. So I owe her you that. You know what she so. said to me when she sat down though? She's like, oh, this is good. I don't have to run. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, Rachel. That's <laughs> to the best of us, I guess. Uh, I've actually got a good one of Cadence when she hurt her one of the times that she hurt her finger catching um she I went and checked on her and she was crying and she stopped Brad from coming over and she was more concerned that her mascara was running than her actual <laughs> fingers and she's like no, no. Like no. <laughs> she was like, running I'm like yeah but it's okay <laughs> That's fine. Classic. Okay. You didn't, did you? Yeah, it happens way too often. <laughs> I'm always worried about the mascara more than my finger. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, Cadence. I don't know how you do it. Like it, that burns when I sweat. Like I literally go blind. I, I cannot see, and I it can't even see when I see sweat go into my eyes. I don't know how you do it with mascara. Like after the time, after the games, I come back with panda eyes, anyways. Uh, see, that's why I wear eye black, just in case I do wear mascara, so it all kind of blends in and makes me look mean. <laughs> you are mean. Yeah, oh, I'm so mean. I'm so mean. <laughs> You're probably the funniest on the team, though, Janice. Definitely. Oh, wait, I was on mute. I said, oh, good, but then I was on mute, so I was a bit shamed. Um, <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> that was shame. I was barely talking up to, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, I'm on mute. That's like a, that's like a boy moment. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> All right, next question. <laughs> I think watching Moy speak that whole time when she was on mute was... Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mamba. What if Moy yeah, cry that happens. Yeah, you cry Moy a lot. No. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> you cry. What a what surprise you would it? Oh, oh yeah, when she's really happy she cries. Yeah. Oh yeah, Moy always cries when she's happy. Remember that remember that first Queensland team to make her? Oh I do remember that actually. Yeah, you just sat in the corner of the dugout. (laughs) Hey, we're all a little bit emotional from time to time. I mean, I cry when I see Moi cry. I try not to look at her. (laughs) (laughs) I try not to look at her because I'm like, no, she's going to make me cry. And I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to (laughs) cry. The funniest thing about Moi that day is like she wasn't like sad about something. She was like happy. Mm. Yeah. Tears of joy it was. It was beautiful. Yeah. Now, uh, I think pretty much this almost answers my next question, which is, is the comedian the best singer <laughs> and the best dancer on the team? Definitely. Janice. Janice can have all of them. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say, so I take all three categories? Good. All yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say I've, I got the category of brushing my hair and looking the prettiest, but yeah, I mean. Or well, not you were so cat the old swearing too. <laughs> I know. You know what? At times I was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you I were. Was aware too, and I was like, oh, looking at people like, did you see that? I didn't even swear. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you're not on camera, I feel like there's some dance moves with that, with those comments. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. There was a bit of a shimmy. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. And I would say I something can... else, but I know it's a little bit inappropriate, and I know we're lying right now, so it's probably not appropriate to say. <laughs> <laughs> but now, yes, there was a couple of dance moves in there. Yeah, yeah. There's dance moves in everything I do. Unfortunately, it's just. I don't know. It just makes everything more interesting. And my son is the same way. So he'd be, he was walking through the shopping center just before dancing down the wall, like the walkway. 
I was like, all right, well, that's definitely my child. All right, yeah. But there's a lot of things he does where, like, you can just look at him and say, yeah, that's definitely Janice's child. So. <laughs> 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 now I have to ask this one uh, following up from the best dancing side of things um, is anyone on the team who does more TikToks on the team if any I'm going to say one of the young ones Soraya yeah. 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 look at her she's trying to get out of it I'm going to put my money on those two my money was actually off. leaning towards Cadence though my money was leaning towards Cadence I'm going towards Soraya yeah, I vote to Mayor too. <laughs> but M does make a fair share. Yeah, I feel like M's yeah, flying on the M. radar here. He's quite oh. quiet. On I think he's offended we didn't pick her. Look at her. <laughs> nah, M, well, you were in the back. You were in my mind too. You were in my mind too. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I think I've said that in the past week. In so. fact, I, I actually recall I actually recall us waiting for the girls because they were doing a TikTok at home plate sometime. Wasn't that you? Oh, no. no, wasn't that Cadence taking a selfie? <laughs> no, in the A two, in A two, they were doing a TikTok at home plate. Those three, all three of them. Oh my god! Not me. What TikTok was it? What TikTok was it? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember said TikTok. I remember said TikToks, but they're in my drafts. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm going to finish up this one last one, which is for anyone that should get involved in softball, especially there at the Red Sox uh, in Brizzy, how can they go about it? Uh, well, they can get onto the website. There's a Red Sox and there's contacts on there for um, contact the secretary or if they go to the Brisbane Softball Association, they'll have the list of clubs and there'll be Red Sox there with contact details under that. And, and follow us on Instagram. <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, yes, we have a good, heavy presence. TikTok, we have TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, we have TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Facebook's are usually, um, the mo- like, the most, like, up-to-date if you want to see stuff about the season. Well, Oli, well, thank you so much for giving up your time on a very late uh, Wednesday night uh, to join us. And um, I was definitely my favourite uh, softball team we will I was definitely watching to see how you were travelling and uh, best of luck next season. Uh, and let's hope uh, you can uh, beat the Panthers uh, in 2021-22 season. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you, girl. No worries. And that's uh, the Red Sox, uh, of course, A1 women's team. Of course, uh, if you want to get involved with the Red Sox, we'll put all the details up uh, on our social media on how you can go about uh, playing for them uh, throughout uh, the next, uh, or obviously into next season. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away here on the Wednesday edition.